So good afternoon, um, everyone. Um, this research um, is part of uh, my my um, PhD student uh, research um, uh, for a PhD uh, at Macquarie University, and um, I I had um, this idea of um, focusing on disasters. Um, based on my own experiences after uh, the 2004 tsunami in Indonesia. And at that time, I was working with the local government in um, different places, but it got me think, like, how should um, I act or what should we do as a local government if the tsunami happens in my place? So that's what um, drove me to do this research. Um, let me give you a description of um, how disasters um, trend um, uh, globally. As you can see from this picture, uh, the, the number of disasters in the last 110 years or so has, has increased dramatically, um, um, especially after, um, since 1950, it goes up exponentially, like exponentially high. So uh, number disasters are occurring and happening more, more and more nowadays, but um, even though after in the middle of like around 2005, it, it, it decreased uh, slightly. So what about number of deaths it has caused? Fortunately, um, as you can see from this graph, there has been a, an exponential decrease in number of deaths as well. So, so we know that this is um, the thing that we are doing at the moment for disaster management or disaster risk reduction are working. And then what about uh, the number of people affected? Um, as you can see here, it, um, it increases as the number of disasters um, occurred um, happening um, more frequently. And, um, but um, it started since the 1970s and then you can see, um, we can um, clearly see the, the correlation or the relationship here between um, like increases population, increases urbanization from this graph. So, uh, putting all these graphs um, together, um, as you can see here, the red line shows that uh, despite um, the number of death increase, the number of uh, the disaster decreases as uh, the number of uh, people affected. So, um, as for our, our conference, how does climate change uh, affect disasters? Uh, this, this graph shows that um, this is the like different types of natural hazards and these are some of the impacts that uh, climate change um, can uh, impact it on this and then all the blue lines here this is where how uh, how the climate change impact can affect all, all um, like 75 percent of the, the natural hazards um, worldwide. So it's, it's really important that why uh, we need to focus on climate change if we want to, uh, to, to, to reduce the disaster risk. And also, um, there are three, uh, like climate change affect disaster uh, in three different ways. It, it affects the frequency, it affects um, the intensity and it affects the security. So like from climate change, natural hazard can be, be uh, more frequent, it can be more um, intense, it can be more deadly and it can happen um, more frequent. And, and let's now from that, the previous graphs, let's disagree, disaggregate um, how climate uh, change related disasters differ or uh, from uh, geophysical and biological disasters. As you can see on this um, three lines here, like the climate related disaster, like climatological, meteorological, and hydrological comprises of um, almost 75% of the total number of natural disasters. And also with the number of uh, people killed due to climate related disasters on on the three lines there if you combine them together it's still more um, comprised more than half of the number of people killed and also um, even more so the impacts on the number of people affected um, climatological meteorological and hydrological disasters um, impact almost um, almost a hundred percent of uh, 
um, these people affected here. So it's really important, and this is the rationale why um, disaster risk reduction need to be linked uh, to cl uh, climate change adaptation or vice versa. But um, how we can actually do that, that's, that's um, another question that we are going to explore. So um, through in my PhD, I'm, I'm looking um, at, this at this concept called resilience. Um, but what does it resilience mean uh, for disaster risk reduction and in climate change adaptation and how you can build resilience to disasters? That's the focus of my research. So throughout my literature review, um, I found I developed this framework to analyze what resilience mean in, th in, in, the, in terms of disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation. So I, I propose a concept in, in the middle there called adaptive and integrated disaster resilience. So what um, I do here, I use resilience as the underlying concept for my research by which uh, I define resilience as the ability to resist, to self-organize, to learn and move forward to, to a better state, um, a more desirable state, in this case, um, sustainable, sustainable um, societies or sustainable environment. And also, um, because I'm looking at institution here, there is a concept uh, that is uh, called adaptive governance. It, it's um, one of the key person or key author on this concept is uh, Carl Volcker, uh, by which they um, they define adaptive governance is the governance system that that is more flexible and less rigid, and it allows it allows for a multitude of of um, organizations in institution work together, and they can learn throughout the process. So these are the four concepts that um, I'm utilizing for my research. So uh, this is one of my findings. So what is disaster, integrated disaster resilience? In this paper, um, I, I review how resilience or disaster res resilience is defined conceptually and practically by uh, different um, developmental, usually de de development organizations. And resilience is, is uh, defined as a, as a positive concept. They, they all uh, want to be resilient when they, they um, implement any project on disaster risk reduction. So what I found here, I call it uh, three layers of uh, disaster resilience. If you see the first layer here is the community. Community needs to be the center of um, any resil uh, resilient strategy. They, their character, they need to decide what they want to be resilient for and how they want to uh, do it. And also to be effective, um, any disaster risk, re resilience, uh, disaster risk reduction activities need to, to revolve around these four stages from prevention, preparedness, response, and res um, rehabilitation. And one reason we have been able to reduce the number of deaths from disasters are um, increased preparedness. Like that's, that's the key to reduce, um, to, if we want to reduce number of deaths. And also the third layer from that is um, the, these layers of, um, I call it a sustainable development components. This is the components that provide um, a supporting environment for the disaster risk reduction activities to take place. And that's, that's um, and I think um, um, our inability to, to, to integrate this, um, this, this framework um, into development, and that's what, um, that's what, why um, like a number of people uh, affected from natural disasters uh, keep increasing uh, as uh, the number of disaster increases. So that's on the this integrated disaster resilience, but also this is not enough. Like how would um, we know that um, uncertainties and complexities of uh, future worlds increases, um, and also the social and ecological system interacts um, and this impact. So how should they impact on disaster? And one way of uh, me trying to, to analyze how we can do about it is to utilize uh, adaptive governance concept. And through my literature review, um, from adaptive governance literature, I found four characteristics that, that, uh, that are highly influenced for us uh, to increase our adaptiveness uh, for future changes and disasters. Uh, they have polycentric governance, participation, self-organization, and learning and innovation. 
So uh, just taking an example for um, how this concept um, is related or help to build resilience, for example, for, um, after the 2004 tsunami in Indonesia, without the help of um, NGOs and international organizations in helping the go Indonesian government to, um, to do our emergency management and rehabilitation, we will, we would, Indonesia would, will not be at this uh, current situation. So, that's, um, so they provide uh, uh, another layer for response um, within disaster risk reduction cycles. And um, the second part is participation and collaboration. Um, as my, fi my finding, uh, I found that in Indonesia, the role, the participation of NGO matters for, um, for in building disaster resilience. Without NGO's participation, the Indonesian government will not have enough capacity to build disaster resilience. And the third one, this is um, this is emerging trend that I observe on self-organization and networks, um, like the increases that we can we can observe on networks flourishing in, uh, for example, cities uh, network of cities in um, dealing with climate change or in dealing with disasters, and that's how I see it. And the fourth key um, factor that I see for us, so we we are able to. To uh, accommodate or work with this these complexities in the future is through learning and innovation, and this is what I see uh, lacks in terms of um, what the current uh, disaster risk reduction, either in Indonesia or also in the in the in the at the global scale, and that's what um, I'm pursuing my my PhD further. So um, taking all this. Findings together, I found this is what I'm, I'm proposing, an, an adaptive and integrated uh, disaster resilience framework um, by which I, I have explained um, the components for each of this framework in, uh, in my paper that I submitted for this conference. So moving from the theory to Indonesia, um, this, uh, this, this map shows a world risk index, index developed by the UNU EHS in, um, in Bonn University. And um, this shows Indonesia is one of the most vulnerable um, or at, ri at risk countries in the world. And um, that's the rationale for me focusing on Indonesia. And also if, um, if I segregated the disasters in Indonesia, climate change related disasters impacted, it has, um, it has, it's more, it's more than, uh, comprised of more than 60% of the number of disasters. Um, it affected more than 80% of the people there. It, um, the cause um, reached almost 70, uh, more than um, 75, 70%, even though the number of deaths from um, climate related disaster is um, so, um, like earthquake and tsunami um, contributed to the largest number of, or the majority of uh, number of deaths in Indonesia. And that's the rationale also uh, for me um, to argue that we need to link disaster. Uh, disaster re reduction and climate adaptation separately, but also, but also uniquely, uh, like integratedly, because of this, the three issue on the frequent, uh, yeah, because of that, but also because of the number of deaths um, contributed from geophysical disasters is higher, so we need to focus specifically on that as well. So, um, taking my framework on Indonesia, despite all the um, yeah, so before I explain this, uh, the current situation for uh, build, uh, building resilience in Indonesia, uh, the, there is a framework called Hyogo Framework for Action. Uh, it's a worldwide framework and Indonesia reached 2.8, currently has a, a level of 2.8 with a maximum level of 5. Like Switzerland reached 4.8, they are the highest, and then a country like uh, Comoro, uh, they get 0 0.8. So. There has been lots of progress, but also these are the things, some of the things that I see needs to be done more if we were, if we want to, um, to build more adaptiveness or a more build adaptive capacity in the future if we were to link it with uh, disaster risk reduction. So these are some of my publications that I have written that explains all these findings in detail, and thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.